Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about the five musical musts. I call them the five musical musts because I think they're so amazing that every single child needs to be introduced to them, either through a book, the music, or both. And uh, so let's get started. The very first one is Carnival of the Animals by Camille Saison. Sorry, this book is ripped up. My kids loved it to death. But uh, Camille Saison was a Frenchman, and he wrote, the, wrote it in 1886. Uh, it describes 14 different animals, and he wrote it as a joke for his friends for a Mardi Gras celebration. He never expected that it would ever be uh, performed in public. In fact, he didn't want it to be performed in public because he was kind of making fun of some musicians and so forth. But in 1922, after he had died, it was performed by the um, orchestra at Cologne in Paris. And to the delight of millions, people loved it. And so very, very quickly it became a favorite amongst uh, people everywhere, but particularly with children. So in 1940, Ogden Nash was uh, commissioned to write a series of poems that went with each one of them. And they're very funny, really hilarious. And then in 1995, Bruce Adolf was commissioned to write a new set of poetry for each one of these 14 sections. So let me tell you a few CDs that you can get. The Classical Zoo, this one is with, it's narrated by Itzhak Perlman, but it has the new one of Bruce um, Adolf, all the new poetry from Bruce Adolf. This one has um, the all the poetry from Ogden Nash, and it's uh, narrated by Hugh Downs. I would get both of these, actually, and I would play them for my kids, and they will love them. Now, another thing that you can do is you can play a guessing game. There are some that some of the CDs that you can get that don't have any of the narration, and so you can just actually play the music, and you can give everybody a list of the 14 animals and say, okay, let's guess them. That will help their oral or their listening skills, and it will make them really in tune to how those different animals sound. But it's a delightful story, and it's the music is fabulous, and there's a number of different books now that uh, you can get on Amazon all about. I went, One I know was written by John Lithgow, and it's really delightful, but there's a whole bunch of them that have been written about Carnival of the Animals and makes it come alive for children. So that's the number one musical must. The second one is Peter and the Wolf. Peter of the, in the Wolf was written by... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, <laughs> it was written by Prokofiev, a Russian composer. He said that he wrote this not only to and for his children, but also for all the children of Moscow. This is a delightful story of a little boy named Peter. And he lives in the woods, and his grandfather tells him not to go beyond the gate. And Peter is, he's like all little boys, he's very, very curious, and he wants to go see what's beyond the gate. Well, unfortunately, there's a wolf beyond the gate. And so the whole story is around uh, Peter saving the day with his friends and everything uh, with this wolf. So each person, each character in the story is represented by a certain instrument of the orchestra. Peter himself is represented by all the strings of the orchestra. And let's see, his grandfather is the bassoon, the wolf, I think, are all the, uh, the drums. Uh, yeah, the brass and the hunters are by the brass drums. Then you have the duck, you have a bird. They are all different instruments. The woodwinds, uh, the brass, all of the different instruments are represented. Um, each one is represented uh, by one of these animals. So he saves the day. This one is just one of the Peter and the Wolves. There's a number of different Peter and the Wolves, again, books that you can get for your children. You want to read them to uh, the story. You want to play the music. If you have an opportunity to actually take them, if they're showing it as a musical play in your neighborhood or in your community, by all means, take your children. Here's some that I particularly love. Uh, this is Melissa Joan Hart, and she's narrating the story of Peter and the Wolf. This one is narrated by Sting, another narration of Peter and the Wolf, and there's a number of others that also that you can get of the narration. This is a delightful, delightful story, and it has been loved and beloved by children all over the world. The next one is The Young People's Guide to Instruments of the Orchestra, and I actually don't have a book to show you on this, but um, this one is actually my teacher in the eighth grade, my music teacher, 
played this one because he wanted us to develop our oral skills and he wanted us to be able to hear what all of these different instruments of the orchestra sound like. So it was composed by Benjamin Britten. He was an English composer and what he did is he took the music of um, <clears throat> Henry Purcell, a piece of music called Abdelaz Abdelazar, excuse me, and in it he creates this enchanting entitled thing of uh, helping you to understand what each section of the orchestra sounds like and then at the very end he brings them all together again. There's also a narration for this. Again, this is the same CD. It's narrated by Hugh Downs and it goes into every instrument of the orchestra. This one I remember my teacher, he had the Hugh Downs narration but then he also had just the instruments and we had a test on that that we he would play the instrument and we had to guess which instrument it was. So that is another musical must. And it's fun, it's interesting, the music is bombastic and kids love it. Okay, another one is the Nutcracker Ballet and there's a number of different books. And the Nutcracker, of course, was Peter Tchaikovsky, the Russian. This is one Nutcracker version. This is another Nutcracker version and still yet another Nutcracker version. And you know all, all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the story of the Nutcracker. In some of the versions, the little girl, her name is Claire. In other versions, it's Marie. And there has, she receives this Nutcracker from Father Dusseldorf on Christmas Eve. And um, it's, been enchant it's had a spell put on it by an evil mouse. And so actually, uh, you know, you've seen it if you've gone to the ballet or taken your kids to the ballet to see the Nutcracker. You know, you see the, bat the battle that goes on between uh, <clears throat> the, um, all the forces and all of a sudden the, the Nutcracker turns into the handsome prince. And he takes uh, Marie and they go to all these enchanting places. And at each one, there's beautiful music and beautiful dancing that's connected to it. And they're, they're traveling literally all over the world. And they, they go to all of these fun and different uh, and interesting places. The music is fabulous. Um, this particular one, this is by Valerie uh, Gergev. And I love this version of it. It has all of it. I'm sure that you have your favorite version of it as well. Now, it's been put into a ballet, and of course, ballet tells a story. They used to, in the early ballets, they would just have the dancers out there. There was no music. It was actually Tchaikovsky that turned it, the ballet into an incredible thing to go and watch. Why? Because he added the dancing and the music and created this gorgeous storyline behind it. So we can credit Tchaikovsky for giving us the ballet as we know it today. This is a really fun one to take your kids to and expose them to around the holidays. If you make it a, a tradition so that they're going back, they're going to get used to sitting there and being able to get through the whole thing. There's lots of magical things that they do now with it. They make the tree grow, the tree becomes magical. The costumes are beautiful, the dancing is gorgeous. You can again prepare your children by playing the music, telling them and reading to them the story so that they will be prepared. Now I had all boys and I remember the first time we took them to the Nutcracker, they or Nutcracker rather, they just about all, just about you know, rolled up and died. They were not happy about it at all. But as we took them to it more and more, I says, I want you to gain an appreciation for the ballet and for this music and for this story. So the more you introduce it, the more you expose it to them, the better they're going to like it. Okay, the very last one is a favorite too, is The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now this one, this version happens to have a girl in it rather than the Disney version. This was um, actually from a poem by Goethe and it was written many, many years ago, uh, actually in 1797. The music for The Sorcerer's Apprentice was written by Paul Ducat and the person, the company that made uh, The Sorcerer's Apprentice where it is today is, of course, Disney. It's included in their original Fantasia. And it's, of course, Mickey Mouse, and he's the apprentice. And there's the wizard, and he leaves. But Mickey Mouse has seen, you know, he's now the apprentice, and he has seen what this wizard has done. And he's dragging water, and it's a long, hard process, and he wants to speed things up. So he puts a spell on the broom like he has seen the, uh, the wizard do. And so then they start uh, hauling all the water. But the problem is, is that he doesn't know how to stop it. You know, he doesn't know how to stop the brooms. And pretty soon as they're just about ready to drown, the wizard comes in and saves the day. So it's a wonderful story. It's a wonderful poem. And thank you, Disney, for 
creating this incredible cartoon for us to be able to appreciate the music and appreciate the story. So those are the five musical musts. Again, it includes the Carnival of the Animals and Peter and the Wolf, the Young Person's Guide to Instruments of the Orchestra, the Nutcracker, and the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Figure out ways, get the books, get the music, read the stories, um, play the music. And again, if any kind of a play or musical comes into your area that is focused around these, take your kids to it. It will be a marvelous experience for them. You can read more about this in my uh, book, Good Parenting or Good Music, Brighter Children, excuse me, and um, make it a magical moment for your kids. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.